Okay, I'm just, I just want to welcome everyone um, to WPL's virtual cooking class, more, more Healthy Desserts with Colin McCullough. Since Colin began, went vegan in 1995, he's been finding new ways to make healthy eating convenient and delicious, especially while raising two boys with health, healthy appetites. Colin teaches private and public cooking classes throughout New England, sharing his experience and recipes with people who want to incorporate more whole food, plant-based meals for health, compassion, and the environment. He has published two books, The Healthy Vegan Cookbook, and he has a new one, Smoothies That Taste Like Girl Scout Cookies. And he will be teaching a class on that um, in January, or is that February? February, I believe, yes. Yep. And you can learn more about Colin on his website and Facebook page. The links are in the chat and there's quite a few other links. On the links, there's links to the recipe in our survey. Um, there's also a book list for vegan holiday cookbooks and our nutrition healthy cooking blog and upcoming um, nutrition classes as well. And our Woo Read called Woo Reads Challenge where you can record books that you read for prizes. Um, and just to note that this project has been funded in whole or part with federal funds from the National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health with the University of Massachusetts Worcester. And I think that's all I have to say and welcome Colin. All right, thank you. you. Thanks, Dot. Uh, I think I've been teaching classes for the, the cooking classes for Worcester Public Library for, boy, at least three years, maybe going on four now. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Think it's four. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's been great to, uh, you know, obviously being able to do them in person is, is fantastic. Um, but, you know, in the online world, I can I can teach from my own kitchen here. And, uh, so, um, so anybody who has been to my classes before uh, for the library knows that. Um, so, like you said, I'm I'm a vegan, uh, but also uh, try to approach things from a whole food, uh, plant based standpoint. So, um, you know, trying to use less processed uh, food. So, uh, and ingredients. You know, I, I eat out sometimes, but uh, most of the time that I'm eating it is food that I make from home. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I don't have uh, three hours a day to spend in the kitchen, you know, cooking everything from scratch. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've worked on different recipes and, you know, different ways of cooking uh, to be able to try and make healthy food uh, more convenient. So you don't have to spend the three hours a day in the kitchen, which I certainly don't have. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of that, a lot of those recipes I put into the Healthy Vegan Cookbook. Uh, this came out last year and this is available on Amazon. Uh, there's 200 different recipes in this book. And I believe at the library, you have some copies of that. So if you wanted to check yes. those out from the Worcester Library, then uh, you can see what it's all about in here first. Uh, and then I also just came out with uh, smoothies that taste like Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a, a small book, as you can see, um, but there's a lot of uh, great photography in the book of the different smoothies and the recipes. Um, and uh, conveniently enough, it's about the size of a stocking. So it would like fit perfectly right into a stocking, you know, great for-, for Yeah, that's Christmas. a good point. You know, <laughs> no. We are uh, ordering a couple of those books and we have a couple of the other ones too, so. Oh, great, great, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so, you know, I've been saying about this one, just, you know, as far as the timing goes, uh, you know, with all of the election drama and the coronavirus and, you know, all of that happening, you know, this is really just for fun. Uh, you know, this one I, was a lot of work to, to do it and, uh, you know, to write it and publish it. Uh, but this one is really just for fun. So, you know, in this time to have something that's just for fun, uh, you know, the, the different smoothies are designed to really taste uh, like Girl Scout cookies, like all the 10 different flavors and it uses uh, whole food healthy ingredients for that. So there's that also available on Amazon. Both of those you can get um, the ebook version or the print version, either one. So uh, thanks for uh, letting me plug the book there for a minute. Oh, sure. <laughs> so I've been vegan for 25 years. Uh, I have two boys who are here with me today who are 18 and 21. 
and they grew up vegan. And, you know, so it's one thing for me to try and eat healthy food um, uh, over the years, but, you know, to try and get my kids to eat healthy food um, and uh, come up with recipes that, you know, that they want to uh, ask for seconds and thirds, um, you know, to come up with healthy snacks and desserts that, you know, I feel really happy about, um, you know, have letting them have extra, you know, if they're uh, hungry in the afternoon and they want to have a quick bite, you know, a quick snack of something, then, you know, these are, these healthy dessert recipes are, are things that I like to keep in the freezer. You know, I might make a double batch, you know, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer, um, especially when they were younger, you know, and they come through the door and they'd be hungry and they want something and, you know, it was easy to, and convenient to be able to do that. So these are three recipes um, that are very convenient that way. But then also these ones, uh, the class today, I sort of meant them to be sort of, um, you know, like uh, uh, gifts that you can, you know, healthy gifts that you can give to your family and your friends, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, buying something these, uh, like I, I gave these as gifts on the last couple of years and, you know, put them in little gift boxes and, uh, you know, people, people love that. So I'm going to go ahead with the first recipe. There's going to be three recipes today. We start out with one that uh, is pretty easy. doesn't have a ton of ingredients in it. Uh, it's going to be a, um, uh, it's, it's called Bluesberry Brothers Bites. So I kind of, it was just for fun, uh, you know, wrote this recipe. We were going to go over to uh, see a viewing of uh, the Blues Brothers movie. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of make something connected with I, that. I love the title. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so this one is actually, this recipe is not in the book, but I have in the uh, Healthy Vegan Cookbook, I have uh, tons of different uh, dessert recipes like this one here. Um, the second one we're going to do is gingerbread cookie bites. And um, that one uh, has a little bit longer list of ingredients. Uh, we'll go through everything. If there are any specialty ingredients or anything, then we can definitely talk about that and where to get them. Uh, and then, so that's sort of like a medium recipe. And then the last one is going to be a little bit more involved, um, but it's definitely worth it. So that's going to be the peppermint blizzard rolls. Uh, that's one that, uh, like I said, because it's kind of more involved, it's a little bit harder to be able to picture in your head how to do it, you know, just on the written direction. So it's great to be able to demonstrate it and be able to show you how to do that. So. Uh, I'm going to use a food processor for all three of these recipes for today. Uh, this is a Cuisinart uh, 14 cup. So I definitely recommend um, uh, it's going to be really helpful if you use a food processor for different things to get a large capacity one like this. I used to have a tiny one and I'd have to like, you know, make everything in batches of two or three because it didn't really fit. So, um, you know, if you are, are uh, putting some money into, you know, investing some money into healthy cooking and, uh, you know, always, of course, the Vitamix, having a really powerful blender, that's really important. Um, but having a large capacity food processor is really a huge help, so much more convenient, so you don't have to make everything in batches of two or three. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that first recipe. And uh, Dot, there's links for all of the recipes over in the, the chat notes over there. Right? Yes. I yeah. Those. Great. And um, people should have also received a email with the um, recipes ahead of time. Oh, great. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with a, a cup and a quarter of quick oats. So uh, in a recipe like this, you know, I, I want, um, instead of using regular oats, which you can, that's, that's okay. But um, I like to use the quick oats because they're in, they're smaller and it really helps to absorb the liquid better than using the larger ones. It's just kind of a, a little bit of a different texture. So I used a cup and a quarter of the quick oats. Put that in the food processor. I'm going to use about a half a cup of uh, pecans here. So I get the raw ones. I don't get the um, roasted, uh, although the roasted would, would taste good as well, but uh, I get the unroasted, unsalted ones. I like to be able to add my own salt and, and decide how much gets put in. Uh, and also, you know, sort of from a, a less processed standpoint than I usually just get them raw. So put cans in there. And I put in 
It's about two thirds of a cup of frozen blueberries. And of course you can use fresh blueberries if you want, that's fine. It's just, uh, you know, being able to make these anytime I want, then I just have the frozen blueberries in the freezer and I can just pull them out. So that's gonna, that's gonna give it a great taste. And there we go, there's two thirds of a cup. And as an optional, um, you can also get uh, freeze dried blueberries. Uh, like I got this from Trader Joe's here. Uh, so this is an optional ingredient. You don't have to put this in. It's just gonna kind of give the give it a little bit more of a rich uh, taste, um, stronger blueberry taste. Um, you know, rather than using an extract or something like that. It's totally up to you. You don't have to add it. But um, you know, you can order this online, uh, or you can, like I said, Trader Joe's has it. Um, you know, a regular supermarket. I'm not sure how easy it would be to find freeze dried blueberries, but um, it's just a fun ingredient if you can find it. And also because it's freeze dried, then it will absorb uh, some more of the liquid from the uh, frozen blueberries as well. And, uh, Paul, I have a question. They, so sure. Somebody, uh, Sue has a question. Can you use walnuts instead of pecans? Yes, yes, you can. Um, the reason that I don't use the walnuts in this is because uh, walnuts have a, a bit of a stronger flavor than the pecans. Pecans just kind of add more of like a buttery kind of flavor to it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use the walnuts. It's just for me, I can, I, it doesn't, it kind of stands out. It doesn't like sit in the background as a taste. Uh, but yes, you can definitely do that. Uh, there's also eight medjool dates. So anyone who's uh, been to my classes before, especially for desserts and smoothies, know that um, dates are my uh, natural whole food choice of sweetener. Uh, so uh, these are medjool dates. So these are um, usually in a supermarket, you're going to find medjool dates or deglet noir dates. And the deglet dates are going to be smaller and already pitted and more firm. Uh, whereas the medjool dates are larger and they tend to be softer and just kind of chewier. So um, it does help in a food processor, if you get, if you can find the medjool dates, these, these work better. Um, regular supermarkets now, I'm, I'm finding these are more readily available, but like I get these uh, easily at Trader Joe's. Um, if you go into uh, like Middle Eastern markets or Indian markets, um, like Patel Brothers, they have the medjool dates in Shrewsbury. Um, so uh, in this one, you know, unlike using, uh, you know, sugar or maple syrup or something like that, um, you know, where, which really kind of gives you a, a sugar rush, you know, you get the blood sugar high. Um, you really don't get that as much with uh, medjool dates as a whole food sweetener because it has all the fiber in it. And that really kind of helps it to kind of slowly go through your system so you don't get the, the blood sugar shock. And plus, you know, you're not like eating, uh, you know, this is going to make uh, maybe 12 or 16, you know, you're not going to sit down and eat all of these. You'll have a couple, uh, you know, all of the dessert recipes that I design or that I've written out uh, are really meant to be uh, very rich tasting. So you would have, you know, maybe, uh, you know, two or three of these and it tastes great and that's it. You're not going to, you're not going to be like Oreos that you open up the package and just, you know, want to plow right through them. So right. I, I see the um, comment, maple... See. Maple oh, syrup yeah. is so Thank good. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Definitely. But also, you know, maple syrup has a, has a distinct taste to it. So in something like this, you know, in, in this kind of a recipe, um, like I don't want to taste maple syrup. You know, I, I want it to really be the strong blueberry taste. So, you know, using a sweetener like medjool dates that don't really have a very strong taste, um, then that's, I prefer that anyway. All right, so I'm gonna put in the zest of half of a lemon. So uh, again, the zest, the lemon zest is gonna kind of sit in the background and really you know, add to the flavor of, and it pairs well with the blueberry flavor. Um, so just a half of a, a lemon zest, you're not really gonna taste the lemon part of it in. It just, um, somehow it just, the, the uh, magic of taste chemistry, it just makes it taste better, so. Add the lemon zest in there. And of course, the wonderful thing about doing these classes online is that I already have everything already measured out. You don't have to sit there and watch me pour, you know, into uh, 
teaspoons and tablespoons for the whole thing. <laughs> All right. And uh, just a couple other things I'm going to put in. There's uh, one uh, tea teaspoon. You can do a teaspoon. Um, I upped it to a tablespoon of hemp seeds. So in most of the desserts that I do, I like to be able to add uh, some kind of a seed in because, you know, something like hemp seeds, uh, they're super nutritious. You know, they're like little nutritional powerhouses, little seeds. Um, and a tablespoon of it or a teaspoon, you put it in, you're not definitely not going to taste it. And it's just going to, you know, be like that extra nutritional uh, boost. Mm -hmm. So. There. Oh, Jennifer wants to know if chia seeds are okay. Chia seeds, um, in this context, I wouldn't use them. The hemp seeds um, are very soft and they kind of blend in, but something like chia seeds or flax seeds also, they're great, but um, they're definitely a much harder seed. So you're going to get like kind of a crunch in there. Uh, so if you use chia seeds in this, um, um, then what I would suggest is that you mill it first, like put it in a little coffee grinder or something just so that it turns it into powder. Otherwise it's going to be kind of crunchy and it'll be a kind of a weird texture. Um, and Carol wants to know, um, where do you get hemp seeds? Um, uh, well, you know, I sound like a commercial for Trader Joe's, but, um, <laughs> they, they have them there. Um, you know, it's definitely something you can order online. Uh, if you can't find it in your supermarket, uh, sometimes, um, you know, like I used to go to Market 32 in Sutton all the time. Um, I'm pretty sure they had hemp seeds there that you could get. Um, you know, if you can't find it in your regular supermarket, um, you know, just ask, uh, see if they have it. If not, then you can just order it online, you know, get it on Amazon or eBay and it'll just come right to your door. It's easy. So I'm going to put in about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt here, just Salt in this little amount, you're definitely not going to taste the salt, but it kind of amplifies the the uh, the tastes that are already there. Uh, so the kind of salt that I like to use is Redmond Real Salt. Uh, it's R E D M O N D. Um, you know, anytime that uh, I call for salt, you know, I know some people don't like to use any salt at all, uh, which is understandable. But you know, for when I do. Uh, Redmond Real Salt actually has the highest concentration of nutrients and minerals in any kind of salt that you can buy. And, uh, How do you spell that again? It's uh, oh. Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and I'm, I'm not paid by them to say that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I wish that, you know, if they wanted to sponsor me, then that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. but. All right. And then also we have uh, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So this is the alcohol-free one. This is uh, glycerin-based, but um, you know you can uh, you can get whatever version of that you want. So about a teaspoon. I don't really need to measure it. I'll just pour it in there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and blend this up for a minute. Usually, what I do for something like this is um, just run it for a minute and then just kind of scrape the sides down a bit and uh, just so I can get everything you know really well mixed together so I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, also being online then you can turn your volume down if you don't want to listen to the machine running here so it's up to you and also I always say uh, if this is a this is a great point if you have any questions that you wanted to uh, throw in at this point while I'm mixing this then you can do that or if you know any uh, good clean jokes or anything like that, you okay. can do that. And check it. So really the main thing that's breaking down here is going to be the pecans and uh, also the jewel dates. You really want to make sure that, that there's no uh, like pieces of dates in here. You want everything to be really uh, mixed you know, very well together. Oh, yeah. We have a question. Um, where do you buy Redmond salt? Is it Patel Brothers at Trader Joe's? Oh, uh, good question. So Probably the, the most consistent place is going to be at Whole Foods in Shrewsbury. Oh. Um, you can definitely order it online. Um, if you don't want to go to Whole Foods, then um, 
uh, you can order it through Amazon uh, or on the Redmond Real Salt Red website. They have, uh, you know, different um, uh, different size of the crystals. You know, they have fine or you know uh, larger crystals, and uh, they have different products. But uh, I usually get mine at Whole Foods, or um, if you go to a health food store, um, then you can find it. I did ask for jokes, so yes, I did see. Uh, <laughs> is it uh, okay for vegans to eat animal crackers? Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. So everything's pretty well mixed together. You can see it's a pretty rich, uh, you know, pretty deep purple color from the blueberries. Can you, so, show, can you just show that again? Yep. There you go. So everything's mixed together there. And so Thank I you. put in. Uh, about a cup of uh, uh, blueberry, uh, sorry, uh, coconut, uh, you know, really finely shredded coconut. Um, so that's what I'm going to roll it in. So we'll take about, about a handful of the mixture like that. I'm just going to roll everything together. You know, of course, uh, if, if you're giving these as gifts and you, you know, you want to follow the COVID safety guidelines, so, you know, you might want to put gloves on if you're going to be giving these mm. to other people but um, good idea yeah so that's like I said it's about an inch uh, maybe like the size of a golf ball or so and just gonna kind of roll that around in the coconut and because because it's sticky because of the medjool dates especially then it kind of picks up the coconut flakes if you have, you know, of course, the finer coconut uh, uh, like powder or something that you have is going to uh, coat it more evenly than the larger pieces is kind of what I had for today. So do that. It's so, coconut powder? I haven't heard of that. Um, yeah, um, you, that's easier to, uh, to find. Like I usually would get that at Patel Brothers. They have, um, it's just really finely shredded coconut. Uh, you know, these are kind of larger coconut pieces that Mm -hmm. um, I got from Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. Again, but there's that. All right, so I'm not going to go ahead and roll all of these, so you guys don't have to watch me do that, but I'll just put the rest of the mixture in a bowl and set that aside, and I'll do that for after the class here. But it'll taste great. Right. I'll just get the mixture out of the, the bowl here. So I can use it for the next recipe. And so, like I said, this makes, you know, 12 to 16, depending on how big it is that you roll each of the, the bites there. Right. You can see, there's that. So, you know, with this one, uh, like I said, 12 to 16, um, I'll roll these and then I'll put them uh, in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. And then anytime, you know, I want uh, something healthy for a snack, then, um, you know, admittedly, I kind of have a sweet tooth, you know, I, um, I like to eat healthy, but I don't necessarily like to eat things that, um, you know, seem like they're healthy, you know, like, this has got the fruit and nuts and seeds and everything. And uh, it's all well mixed together. And it tastes fantastic. But, you know, uh, something like a uh, a seed and nut bar or something like that. I, I, you know, it looks really healthy, <laughs> but you know, I like to have something that kind of has a dessert kind of taste to it, but it's also really healthy. So, um, you know, when people, people say like, Oh, as a vegan, like, what do you eat nuts and seeds all day? And, uh, yeah, but I eat them in something that, you know, it, uh, you know, tastes like a, a, blueberry uh, dessert bite so 
I don't feel like I'm sacrificing it or anything. I'm just going to rinse out that food processor real quick here. All right. So I see the, the comment, uh, uh, nighttime snack is usually Pop-Tarts. So yeah, I, I love the taste, you know, the tastes of things like that are great, but you know, this kind of thing, you know, also has a great taste, but um, you know, it's all uh, whole food healthy ingredients and um, you know, you can, you can have it and it's just gonna, just gonna make you stronger. So. So we'll move on to the next here. The Whole Foods for the Redmond Real Salt or Amazon. Yep, on the Redmond website. All right, I'm gonna put this aside here for later. And I'm gonna move my tray over to the next recipe. So Colin, if you froze these all made up, like how long, if you wanted, like Carol says, a nighttime snack, how long would you take it out of the freezer to, to so it could defrost or? Oh, can you, you, don't, you don't need to thaw it. Um, oh. And something that's small like that, um, it's not going to be frozen solid. So you can okay. have it oh. well, right out good. of the freezer. My next recipe over here. And so, like I said, this one is gonna be the gingerbread cookie bites. Uh, this is actually one of my wife's favorite uh, uh, dessert recipes from the, the cookbook. So, you know, these, because they're, they're whole food and healthy ingredients in these dessert bites, um, you know, when I was writing the cookbook, then I, I was thinking like, what chapter do I put this under? Because, you know, they're desserts, but you know, they're also healthy snacks and, you know, you could even like grab a handful of these and have them for breakfast. You know, I mean, it's really similar. Like if you were to make a, a blueberry, uh, you know, type smoothie, then most of, you're going to be putting most of those same ingredients in a blender with water. So it's really actually very similar to a smoothie, but like in this, you know, dessert form. Um, so uh, actually the the chapter in the cookbook is called uh, healthy snacks and it's not called dessert because really you, you know, if it's healthy, then why not have it for breakfast? Why not have it for a snack? You can have it for dessert as well. So uh, you don't have to save it for, you know, after, after dinner um, as a sweet treat, you can really have it, you know, anytime during the day. So, mm -hmm. all right. So the next one, uh, just is going to be uh, some more ingredients. Did you have any uh, questions or um, comments or anything? I don't think so. And if it, yeah, if people want to um, just post in the chat and then at the end we can unmute and um, ask questions as well. But I think we're all caught up. Great, great, all right. So gingerbread cookie bites. Uh, this one has a lot of fresh ginger in it. So, you know, I really want this to have a, a, a strong, ginger taste, uh, which the fresh ginger is going to do. And then there's different spices that you add to that as well um, that really uh, taste fantastic. Um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, having something that tastes like a dessert that's really designed to taste like a dessert, but is actually using all whole, whole food healthy ingredients and you can have it anytime. It's all right. So uh, how long can you keep the blueberry bites in the fridge? Um, Usually I would say up to four days or so, uh, maybe a little bit longer, but um, uh, they just generally don't last that long. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Typically in my house, uh, especially if my, my kids are here, yeah. uh, then it doesn't last long at all. But uh, yeah, three or four days in the refrigerator. And then, uh, like I said, you know, you put them in the freezer and they'll last a really long time. So first recipe for the gingerbread cookie bites, uh, we have the one cup of the quick oats. So in all these different kind of, uh, you know, healthy bite, dessert bite recipes, then I usually use oats as one of the uh, main ingredients that's not only, you know, really healthy for you, it's got a lot of great fiber, um, but it also absorbs a lot of the liquid and helps to kind of hold everything together. Uh, so I usually have that. So. There's a cup of the quick oats. And again, 
I prefer to use the quick oats in this because they're just a lot smaller and uh, just not going to have as uh, thick of a texture uh, as if you use regular rolled oats. But you can use the regular if you want. It's just a difference in preference for consistency. Uh, we have eight of the medjool dates, so that's about a cup. Uh, so with the medjool dates, one thing I forgot to mention is um, usually when you buy them in a supermarket, the pits are still in them. So you want to make sure that you take the pits out, uh, you know, especially in a food processor, it's just going to break those pits down into smaller pits and you're just going to break your teeth trying to eat them. So definitely want to make sure the pits are taken out there. So there's about a cup, uh, eight medjool dates. There's a half a cup of cooked sweet potatoes. So I made that ahead of time. A lot of times with sweet potatoes, uh, you know, I'll just peel and boil, uh, peel and cube and boil a couple at a time and then just put them in a Ziploc bag, keep them in the freezer. I use them for bowl meals. I use them for desserts. There's different smoothie recipes that I have that have sweet potato in it. Uh, you know, sweet potato, um, uh, it has a, a lot of uh, uh, nutrition, a lot of health benefits to it. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the, the few things that, uh, you know, I really try to use a lot of um, just because it's uh, so good for you. And it also helps make it nice and sweet. So that's cooked. You don't want to use the raw, definitely, in this. And then um, I do have uh, for this, this is Again, this is sort of an optional ingredient if you wanted to use it, but I do use some vegan graham crackers um, in this. I, I like the taste that it adds, and uh, you know, it's, you can definitely get ones that don't really have a lot of sugar in them. Uh, this is definitely more of a processed ingredient, but you know, it's graham crackers. It's not like you know most of the other things in the cookie aisle. But so it's up to you whether you want to use them. Uh, it also helps to absorb, just like the oats, it kind of helps to absorb some of the liquid uh, that's in the different, uh, in this recipe. So I'm just gonna crush these up here. And if you didn't wanna use the graham crackers, then you could just um, use some more oats. Uh, like I said, just kind of helps to absorb liquid of things. And, I always uh, feel if I'm eating graham crackers, I'm eating something healthier than a cookie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, honestly, I have a box of them and I don't really eat them uh, plain. I don't really have them with anything. It, I usually use graham crackers um, as an ingredient in, in other things, um, you know, whether it's pie crusts or, you know, in the bites or something like that. So uh, there's two tablespoons of the hemp seeds. And this is going to be similar to the other one where you know, if you use flax seeds or you use chia seeds, then you can do that. Just make sure you grind them first because putting them in the food processor is not going to break them down and they're going to be really crunchy. So there's two tablespoons of the hemp seeds. And uh, I, I did, I used, uh, uh, this is a microfine planer. Uh, so I used that to uh, grate the one inch thumb of fresh ginger. So I have that already done here. And that gives us such a great taste, so much better than if you use powdered ginger. If that's all you have, then go ahead and use the powder. Uh, it's okay, but I like it to be really strong uh, in this recipe. And then I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses. So, um, you know, like I said, I usually use, uh, you know, if I'm going to use a sweetener, uh, I almost always use them, always use the medjool dates. Um, and in gingerbread, one of the main ingredients that gives it the kind of taste that it has is molasses. So it has a very distinct taste and nothing else that I'm going to use is going to give me that taste. I like to use the blackstrap molasses because it has, um, uh, it has a higher nutritional, um, uh, it has, has a higher amount of nutrition than um, the different uh, other kinds of, of sweetener. Uh, dates and molasses, I think, are, are really the only two that really have any nutrition. So in this recipe, I'm really just using it for flavor, um, just to you know get that you know kind of deep, uh, uh, rich taste that only molasses is really going to be able to give you. So I'm going to put in a tablespoon there. 
So again, I'm not really using the molasses for sweetener. It's really more as a taste. So all I need to get that taste is going to be about a tablespoon there. And then as far as the different spices go, um, there's going to be, uh, I mixed them all together here. So there's one teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh, there's going to be a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, half of a teaspoon of the Redmond real salt, and then about an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. Uh, cloves a little bit goes a long way, so just an eighth of a teaspoon. But, you know, when you have gingerbread, uh, you know, as a cookie or, you know, the regular gingerbread, then, uh, you know, one of the things that really gives it the distinct flavor is the different spices. It's the nutmeg and the cinnamon and the cloves. So I'm going to add that in. And then the last thing in the recipe is about a teaspoon of the vanilla. So I'm going to put that in there. Sue has a question. Where can sure. you get molasses? Um, regular supermarkets are going to have molasses. If you wanted to try and find blackstrap molasses, then I'm pretty sure most supermarkets would have that. But I think I've seen them, seen that in the yeah, the, stores. Yeah, the uh, blackstrap molasses tends to have more uh, nutrition than regular molasses, just in the way that it is uh, processed and 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 made. Uh, so I try to go for the blackstrap if I can. And, uh, you know, it's an ingredient, like I have this bottle and, uh, you know, it lasts a long time. Uh, you know, it takes me months and months <laughs> to go through a bottle of molasses. I just don't use it that much. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, blend this up. And just like before, you know, I'll stop it a couple of times just to kind of scrape it down and, and check on it. And for any of my gluten-free friends out there, uh, this is definitely still a recipe that you can make. Uh, you would just want to make sure, uh, you know, if you are gluten-free or if you have a friend that's gluten-free, uh, just make sure that you get the gluten-free oats. Um, you may have to special order those, but I believe it's often made on uh, machinery that um, uh, makes breads and different things. So there's usually or flour and there's uh, possibly some contamination. So you can buy gluten-free oats. And then also as far as the graham crackers go, uh, you can get uh, gluten-free graham crackers as well. Take that down one more time. And it's all the pieces it, um, are breaking Philomena down mentioned that she has seen blackstrap molasses at Market Basket. Okay. And Sue wants to know, is it similar to honey? Molasses? Um, I'd say it's mostly similar to uh, maple syrup, but mm. as, as a kid uh, who loved maple syrup, um, molasses is really not a good substitute. <laughs> No, it's, it doesn't have the same taste, but no, it's kind of a, I don't know, a spice on its own or ingredient on its own. It can't really yeah. compare it to anything. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a dark, rich, thick, very thick syrup. So mm -hmm. I guess it's closest thing would be maple syrup. But uh, <laughs> Carol says really molasses is harsh <laughs> and kind of bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Me, it is. It can yeah. be. Yeah, I mean, I definitely like, like you if wouldn't you're want gonna, a spoonful of it. Uh, if you put it on uh, pancakes, then uh, <laughs> yeah, something like right. that. But, you know, again, I just use it as a flavor in, you know, smoothies and different things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's really not people. Some people use it for a sweetener, but I like to rely on the dates or the sweetness and then just yeah. um, the molasses right. for, for that taste, you know, similar to in the healthy vegan cookbook, most of the recipes don't use any oil. I typically don't um, use any kind of oil to cook with or bake with, but um, you know, there are some like salad dressings that I do use some of the toasted sesame oil, uh, you know, a teaspoon at a time or a tablespoon, um, you know, just for taste because you really can't get that taste any other way that I know of. 
Um, and then the molasses is the same, really. It just has such a unique kind of flavor to it. Yeah, so. it does. But um, it's good in baking, someone mentioned. And somebody also mentioned, Donna mentioned, um, ginger is so nice to have in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely. Agree. Yeah. Yep. So you can see it's just, it is so sticky that it's just kind of blended all together here. So similar to the blueberry bites, then, you know, I have about, um, you know, a little handful that I'm going to roll together. And like I said, you know, make, I usually roll them about uh, an inch or so like that, you can see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because I've, I've had it in the food processor and, you know, broken it down and, you know, you might see, you know, small little pieces of, of things in there, but it's pretty well broken down. So, you know, especially like with the ginger, I definitely would recommend that you grate that first uh, because you definitely don't want to bite into this and get, you know, a big chunk of ginger. It's, it's pretty strong <laughs> as a piece. So again, I'm just going to put these the mixture in a bowl and then go back later and do that because we have the last recipe to do here. And is, is brown sugar, um, sugar and molasses, Donna mentioned? What's up? Is brown sugar, Donna is um, mentioned that brown sugar is sugar and molasses. I I've think heard, so. I think I've heard that too. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just gonna rinse, rinse this out really quick. When I do these classes at libraries, I always have to have somebody help me uh, to be able to rinse everything off and bring it back to me. But at least in my kitchen, I can. That somebody would be me here. <laughs> yeah, I miss doing. I miss the uh, in-person classes. Yeah, I do too. And you know, yeah. I love to be able to give out samples of right. all this food to everybody. You know, you you see it on the screen, and I wish that I could reach through the screen and give it all to you but um, unfortunately i'm gonna have to Technology, eat it all yeah we're not there yet yeah and uh my boys will be happy to uh eat all of this for the rest of the weekend as well i'm sure quite so there's the gingerbread cookie bites and there's the finished one so I'll go ahead and move this stuff over. And then the last one, like I said, the last one is definitely more involved. Um, the peppermint blizzard roll is the last one. And I think so Philomena um, commented that we all love the samples. Yes, <laughs> thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, especially, you know, for something like this, you'll see it's definitely, uh, you know, it, it, it takes some effort to be able to make something like this. So, you know, to, do it in the class and be able to hand out the samples, you know, people can, uh, you know, be able to actually see what it tastes like. So, if, you know, if you might see this process and say, well, it's too much work, but it's worth it. It's really good. Um, this is actually the finished one. It is actually one of the pictures on the back of the LP oh, vegan yeah. cookbook. It's the pinwheels here. So it looks really pretty. That's one of the reasons I really like to give these as a gift because uh, they look really pretty. And uh, you know, when I wrote the recipe for this, sort of the, the idea of it was to make uh, like the healthy version of a York peppermint patty. So something that had nice chocolate flavor and also a really strong mint flavor uh, as well. Uh, you know, those two flavors combined so well together. Um, so that was sort of the idea behind it, you know, trying to use whole food, healthy ingredients um, uh, to make sort of like the healthy, natural version of a York peppermint patty. And, uh, you know, I've, I've gotten great feedback, uh, you know, for the over uh, the years that I've, you know, gave, given these out as gifts and also, you know, taught the recipe in classes. People really like this one. So, so basically this one is kind of a two part process. So uh, like you see in the pinwheel here, there's two layers to it. Uh, there's the chocolate base layer, and then there's going to be the peppermint layer. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, make the first one up and I'll roll it out and show you and then make the second layer, put it in, 
and then we'll roll it up. So for the uh, chocolate part of it, we're gonna start with dates. Uh, this one uses 12 Medjool dates. So this is, uh, I want it to be really sweet. And this actually makes quite a bit uh, the, when the roll is done. And you know, once you've put it in the refrigerator and it's, it's, it's cooled down, and becomes you know pretty firm. And once you slice that into pieces, then those pieces are pretty big. Uh, so you know you're definitely not going to plow through this whole thing. You're going to have a couple of pieces, and then that's, that's you know it tastes great, but you don't you don't it's, like I said not like Oreos that you're just going to plow through the whole back of them. So there's a third of a cup of the quick oats. We'll put that in. And then a third of a cup of the pecans. Like I said, I usually use the raw, not the roasted and salted kind. And then there's three tablespoons of cacao powder. So cacao powder is like the raw, um, less processed version of cocoa powder. Uh, so basically they just, this is, um, uh, you know, the, just the ground uh, cacao beans. Uh, it's kind of bitter by itself. So that's why I use a lot of the uh, dates in there for sweetener. Uh, but, you know, this gives things a really nice chocolate taste. So when people say uh, that chocolate is good for you, then it's not just wishful thinking, it's true. Um, you know, cacao, cacao uh, has a lot of uh, antioxidants. Uh, it's really nutritious, very healthy. But then you add the fat and the sugar to it and you make chocolate, it's less healthy. So this is going to give you the wonderful rich chocolate taste, but with all of the health benefits of chocolate. So there's three tablespoons there. If you don't have uh, cacao, you can get that um, Trader Joe's uh, Whole Foods. Uh, you can order it online. Um, if you don't have access to that, uh, if you just have uh, cocoa powder, that's fine. You can use that too. Uh, cocoa powder is just basically has been baked. The cacao has been baked, so it's a little bit uh, more of a refined product, but um, you know, either one. And then I'm gonna use an eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt here. I'll put that in. And then in this one, like I said, I want a really um, uh, rich chocolate taste. So in this one, I am including about uh, half of a high quality chocolate bar. Uh, this one is actually 85% cacao. So um, the, when I have recipes that call for chocolate, I really never use um, chocolate chips uh, because it's usually chocolate chips are usually like 45, 50% cacao. And uh, um, you know, when I actually use chocolate for something, I want it to be a really, really dark, rich chocolate taste. So it's like 85%, 90% cacao is what I go for. Uh, this actually has, um, is a peppermint flavored cacao or chocolate. Um, so, uh, this is actually going to make it even stronger mint taste. So I'm just going to break that up and put that in. You do have the cacao powder there. So if you didn't want to use chocolate and just use the powder, then you can do that. But again, I'm just trying to make this as rich as possible. So blend this together for a minute. And this one, I'm just gonna let it run for a few minutes. It really breaks everything down, makes it really smooth. And, we uh, couldn't hear you. I, I'm not sure if you were saying something earlier, but we couldn't hear what you oh, were trying to say. Yeah. Uh, the parchment paper. I just oh, tore okay. off a, a big sheet of parchment paper. Okay. This. So this one, I, I have to let it run for a few minutes because it's really gonna break down everything and make it sticky. So. You know, right now it's it's still kind of crumbly and I really need it to be to stick together well for this kind of a roll. Thank you. 
before. So it's everything's heating up, and especially once the the dates heat up, then they get to a point where they get really sticky. Still not there. This is kind of one of the fun things about a food processor is you have things like this that, you know, it's crumbly, crumbly, and then all of a sudden it heats up to the point where it becomes sticky enough that it all sticks together. So, darn it, a little bit longer. Usually when I am running this in the food processor, I run it uh, for a few minutes long enough so that when you take the top off, it's actually steaming uh, because of all of the friction of uh, blending these ingredients together creates a lot of friction and makes it hot. So just one more minute here. I know I'm sure you can't see this on the through the camera, but it's actually steaming a little bit because of the heat. Put my hand in and it's hot. So I'm going to put this as a layer on the parchment paper. Yeah. So basically I want to make about you know maybe eight inch by eight inch square of it. And I'm just gonna tilt this down so you can see better what I'm doing here. I'm going to put it out onto the parchment paper. Put myself in the process. And I just want to push everything down here. And just kind of push everything into, like I said, I get about an eight, eight by eight. And also I have a uh, I use a little rolling pin. Uh, this is an Indian uh, rolling pin um, that they usually use more in like making Indian food. But um, you know, you can use a bigger one if you want. But this is kind of small and, and versatile, easy to use. So just kind of roll it out, and as you roll it, it becomes less crumbly as well. Make it flatter here, and. I just want it to be kind of more even, uh, so not so thick in one spot. You want it to be a nice thin layer all the way around here. So again, this one is it's kind of hard to to really get it if you are just reading the the text of it. You know how you would actually do it. And it looks like I said, it kind of looks like a lot of work, but. It's so good. It's really worth it in the end. And you know, the, the pinwheel just looks, besides that it tastes so great, it really looks, looks, looks very fun. So there's gonna be the base layer here. And I'm gonna move this out of the way. You can see that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make the second, there we go. And make the second half of it, which is going to be the mint flavor to it. So I'm going to rinse this off. I'm going to get the chocolate off because you want this to come out uh, kind of like whitish green. You don't want it to be brown from the, the chocolate in this layer of the of the pinwheel. We are probably going to have to go over a little. We're at 326 now, but okay. as long as, I mean, we're all on our end, it's fine. So Okay. It won't be the, uh, too much longer. Okay, no, that's fine. I don't want to rush you. And Jennifer mentioned that if she had all, she wished she had all the ingredients on hand, she would make them right along with you. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's actually tried that. 
Well, is this is this video today going to be available afterwards on the yes, website? Yes, yeah, we're recording this and it'll be on our the library's YouTube channel. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you can uh, you can go back and and kind of follow along to that later mm -hmm. uh, once you have all of the the ingredients. Yeah. Right. And Carol mentioned that is great. Yeah, we have it's our YouTube channel, and then we have different playlists. So this would be under the nutrition and cooking playlist. Right. And right. Um, Philomena mentioned that also Market Basket has cacao, Hershey mm -hmm. brand. Hershey's okay. brand, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be that uh, second mint layer of filling. So there's the two thirds of a cup of finely shredded coconut. And so I'll put that in here. Going to put in uh, this is probably the the biggest specialty ingredient of of this recipe. Uh, this is coconut mana. Uh, the brand is Nativa. So there we go, coconut mana. So unlike, can, just, can I just? See, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Yep. You need to see it again. Yeah, if you can. Yep. So that's oh, okay. here, Nativa. Um, this is more of a specialty product that you would find at. Uh, you know, Whole Foods or, um, you know, usually I go, you know, I don't go to Whole Foods uh, uh, regularly, you know, I might go, you know, once a month, once every couple of months, just to kind of stock up on the uh, specialty ingredients. So this lasts a really long time, it's shelf stable. So I'll get this, um, you know, I usually buy like three jars at a time, and then just have those on hand for making different desserts. So, you know, from a a whole food on process standpoint, um, coconut manna, unlike so many of the different, you know, coconut products like coconut oil or uh, coconut cream, you know, different things like that, um, where, you know, that's been extracted and it's really uh, processed, um, you know, it's a, a kind of a big step away from coconut itself, which, um, you know, just raw coconut itself is actually uh, pretty, pretty healthy. You know, if you're stranded on a desert island and uh, if you eat coconut for, you know, months at a time, then you could survive on that. You get really sick of coconuts, but um, so coconut manna is, is basically just like, um, it's just a pureed um, form of, of regular coconut. Um, so it hasn't really been processed very much, um, you know, similar to how you would just put uh, uh, peanuts in a food processor and just grind them down and grind them down until you make peanut butter. That's basically what uh, coconut man is. So it's just pure coconut, nothing's been removed. It's still got all of the fiber of the coconut. So, uh, you know, it gives it the, the fantastic taste um, and also definitely has some, some fat in it as well, um, which works really well in this. So there's gonna be about a quarter of a cup of coconut Is it manna. sweetened, Colin? This is not sweetened. No, nope. no. Okay. This is just. There's only one ingredient in this, and that's coconut. That's it. Okay. And um, Philomena wants to know if there is a reasonable substitute for the manna. Hmm. Well, what I'm going for, it's not so much the taste of the coconut that I'm trying to get, um, because you have the shredded coconut, but. Um, this is supposed to be like uh, coconut manna uh, because it has the fat in it, then um, it becomes a lot more firm at room temperature. So usually like to make it liquidy like that, you have to put it in the microwave or, you know, boil it in a pot for a little bit. Um, let's see, what would the substitute be? I mean, if you use something similar like peanut butter, then it's going to definitely have a much stronger taste and it's not going to be right in this, in this, uh, so I'm not sure how to answer that. If you can't, you can definitely get this online. Like you can go on eBay or Amazon and you can get this um, easily. Uh, so if you can't go to Whole Foods, then you can definitely get it online. All right, so I'm gonna put in, it's gonna be about a quarter of a cup here. And, and is the shredded coconut unsweetened? It is. Yep. Okay. No, I don't usually uh, use uh, sweetened coconut for I, I don't I don't have any of that. Okay, so there's a quarter of a cup of fresh mint. So like I said, I want this to be a really strong mint and it gives it a, a bright green flavor uh, color as well. So it's really appealing to the eye. Um, 
So I am going to use uh, some agave nectar. I think it's out of 200 recipes, I think this is the only recipe that uses agave nectar. So I really don't use this much, but um, and I use it in this layer because I can't use dates um, in this layer because the dates are gonna turn this uh, white, you know, green layer brown, which I'm trying to get that contrast of the two different colors. So I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of the agave nectar as a sweetener. And that's not gonna change the color. Yeah, so like I said, I don't usually use agave nectar. It is kind of a processed form of sweetener. Um, so I'd like to use the dates as much as I can, but um, agave nectar is gonna work for this. And then the last thing I'm gonna use is one teaspoon of peppermint extract. So like I said, I really want this to be very strong peppermint flavor. Uh, can you substitute with another sweetener, uh, honey or maple syrup? Um, another reason why, yes, you could. Another reason that I am using the agave nectar is that it doesn't have much of a taste, uh, whereas honey or maple syrup has a stronger taste. And uh, I don't want to be able to pick that out in this recipe, but you could use that as an alternative if you want. So I'm going to put in uh, half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of peppermint extract is going to make a really strong flavor. So this one is going to be, it's going to be necessary to uh, stop and start this a number of times just to really kind of break everything down here. So I'm going to have to do it probably four or five times uh, just to make sure everything is really well mixed together. You really want this to come out as uh, spreadable and thin as possible. Which only, only doing this for a while in a food processor is going to heat it up to the point that it kind of breaks it down and makes it really small. And So most of the healthy dessert recipes in the cookbook uh, are like the, the first and the second ones, you know, it doesn't, it, uh, it's not too hard to put it all together. You just, you know, putting all of the different ingredients in the food processor and then just blending it uh, and then rolling it up. Um, so those are fairly easy. This one, um, you know, because it's definitely more involved as a recipe, it's not something that I typically, you know, will, you know, just come home and, and make that real quick. Um, this is really, uh, for me, this is kind of a, a special recipe to make for uh, gifts and, you know, just as like a special kind of thing. So pretty well, pretty well mixed together. Um, if you were giving these as a gift, would you put them like in a glass jar or a plastic container or cardboard you, box? I've or? bought uh, little cardboard, uh, little collapsible cardboard boxes um, mm -hmm. that I can, you know, like um, like you might get a little thing of donut holes in or something like something small like that, and then just put in an assortment of the different uh, mm -hmm. recipes. So you can see here the mint is pretty well broken down there. And so I'm going to put this as a layer spread out on top of the other layer. And like I said, I'll move this over so you can see it. Turn the camera down so you can see it better. Base layer here. And so on top of that, I'm just going to spoon out the mint coconut layer here. I'm going to spread it out over most of it, but I'm going to leave about an inch 
up at the top of it. So I'll show you that. Here and get out as much as So I'm just gonna spread this, and you can use your fingers too. Spread this out so you have a nice thin layer of it, just like the chocolate. So I'm covering the chocolate part with the mint part, except right at the end here, you can see. Okay. So there's about, about an inch or so that I've left it un, uncovered. And then so if you've ever rolled sushi before, then you're, you're going to know exactly what this is, but I'll show you. This is, now let's see, I have the sushi rolling mat. So you don't need to use this, but it helps. Um, uh, basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to put the parchment paper, put it under the parchment paper, and it's going to help me to roll the, um, the peppermint together. So I just want to make sure you can see this from the side here. Um, you can use just the paper if you want. Um, that that will work. But I'm basically just kind of trying to like, roll it onto itself here. And that last like that last one inch part here that's exposed, you want to leave this right till the end. Right, so kind of rolling it up onto itself. Make it as tight as you can so that there's really no like air gaps or anything in there. And we're just kind of like rolling it just like sushi, just kind of rolling it onto itself. We just go slowly here, rolling it onto itself, and just kind of passing it down, making sure that you're getting that good roll shape. So, and it's almost done. Almost done, and then you can see like there's a little bit left here that's exposed. So kind of keep rolling it onto itself. So you want to make sure that it's formed into a nice roll shape. Yeah, and I'll show you that. So, yeah, you can see it like that. And so what I'll do at this point is I'll take some shredded coconut. Um, I don't have any out right now, but in this, I'll put some shredded coconut out and um, just make sure I roll uh, this covering it with the shredded coconut. And then I'll put that in the refrigerator. So as you can see right now, it's kind of crumbly um, because it's not cooled off yet. It's still actually pretty warm, um, but the coconut mana is going to really um, firm up uh, once you put it into the refrigerator. And then at that point, like I'd say, put it in for about an hour so it can cool down and firm up. And then at that point, you would uh, just take a knife and slice it into, you know, like one inch segments or half inch segments. Um, and it comes out in this uh, beautiful pinwheel kind of shape mm. like that right. so that is like i said that's kind of a a more uh involved dessert to make but you know it's really visually impressive you know it's if you bring it to a party or uh you know give it as a gift then it's something that you know it takes a lot of work but you know people can see that it took a lot of work and they appreciate that so um all right, so I think that's gonna be it for today. We have the three yeah. recipes done. Uh, does anybody have any questions at this point uh, before we yeah. wrap it up? I think there's one there from Carol. Um, okay. She likes the recipes, but she and has learned you know, about new ingredients. She's not a big mint fan, so could she reduce the amount of fresh mint? Um, what I would reduce is um, if you don't 
if you don't want to have it as strong, then just don't use the peppermint flavor. Um, you know, keep the mint, the fresh mint in there if um, uh, if you if you can, uh, because uh, you know with the fresh mint, uh, you know you're going to get the health benefits of all that, and really the the peppermint flavor is really just a you know, really punch up that flavor and make it really strong. So, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be much more mild if you just use the, the fresh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's your wonderful instructor, Colin. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And um, what would you like to have as your main protein on Thanksgiving? Uh, well, I usually have some kind of a, of a roast. Uh, this year, I actually did a, a video earlier for the main uh, veg fest, um, where there are so many different roasts, uh, vegetarian roasts to choose from. Now, uh, there's tofurkey that you know has been around a long time, and you know, for for me, having been a vegan for a long time, that's that was the only thing that I that was out there for years and years, and then. Um, Eventually, you know, there are different like Trader Joe's has one. There's a Whole Foods roast. Uh, uh, there's Gardein roast that you can get at most supermarkets around the holidays. And uh, so now there's just so many different choices. And so I do like to have uh, some some kind of roast mixed among the other things. Uh, just has been tradition for me. No, this is really good and give me some ideas for. Um holiday you can make your desserts and you know all in one shot so mm -hmm. yep and um good for class. for the uh, main veg fest uh, if you go onto their uh, website uh, for the main animal coalition they run the main veg fest every year and i believe that they have the video posted where i did the review of seven different roasts there were six roasts that six different roasts that i bought from the supermarket and then there was one that i made myself um, so that's there as well, um, if you wanted to check that out as well. Yes, that definitely sounds worth checking out. Um, and Donna says, thank you so much for doing this. And I, I did want to let everyone know I posted um, links again in the chat. There's quite a few of them. There's the recipes, our survey. It would be great if everyone could fill out our survey. Um, there's a link to some vegan holiday cookbooks that you could um, check out from library, our healthy cooking and nutrition resources blog, and our upcoming classes as well. So, and yep. your uh, web page and Facebook page. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and, yeah. and just again, to make my publisher happy here, uh, Healthy Vegan Cookbook. You know, most of, the, most of the classes that I teach are for libraries, uh, for people who are not vegetarian, who are not vegan, but, you know, just like with the recipes that, uh, that we did today, um, you know, it's really just meant to expose people to different healthy recipes. Um, you know, I always tell people, you know, as far as healthy eating goes, you know, whether you're vegetarian or vegan or, you know, just wanting to learn some healthier recipes for yourself and for your family, you know, to, to eat something that uh, is healthy, but, um, you know, if you have something that is healthy, but like you have to plug your nose to eat it, that it doesn't taste good, then... Um, it's not the right recipe, you know, it's, you really should be able to make lots of different things that are healthy, but also taste really fantastic. So with the healthy vegan cookbook, that was really the, um, the idea, you know, and with the classes that I teach, it's really the ideas, um, you know, whether or not you're a vegetarian or vegan, you know, it's different recipes, uh, trying to use whole food, healthy ingredients, uh, to make things that taste really good. You know, I mean, like I said, my kids, 18 and 21 now, uh, you know, different ways that I used, I used to, you know, try and get them to eat healthy food. Um, you know, I couldn't just like give them a smoothie that tasted like, uh, you know, grass, you know, it had to be good. So um, uh, that's, that's always been my intention with these classes is to show people that, you know, just because you're eating healthy doesn't mean you have to feel like you're sacrificing. You know, you don't want to have to plug your nose when you eat it. Uh, you really should never have to do that. There's so much, so many great recipes out there. Yeah, everything you make always tastes good. And, um, you know, even the things that aren't sweet, like you said, you don't have to plug your nose to eat it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I would say if, if you have to plug your nose, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. You're using the wrong recipe. <laughs> right. 
Well, I enjoy that. I enjoy learning about all the different ingredients, and it seems like, and you tell us where we can find them. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful. Yeah. It's one of the great things about uh, you know the internet these days is you can just order any of this, you know, any of these specialty ingredients you can easily find on Amazon, on eBay. <laughs> Um, they're delivered right to your door. You don't have to go to a store that you're not familiar with and, you know, go hunting through the store and, you know, feel like you're on a, um, on a treasure hunt trying to find this impossible thing. Just right. have it ordered and delivered to your door. Piece right. of cake. That makes sense. Right. And so your next class, you're doing the smoothies that taste like girls. No, the soups. Yes. You want yeah. to just yeah. tell us about the two classes you got, you have coming up. Yep. So for the healthy soups, again, you know, using whole food, healthy ingredients, uh, that one, I, I do tend to use the, the blender for a lot of things to, you know, really blend it up and make it nice and creamy and smooth. Um, actually, one of the three soups from the class uh, we just had last night, um, you know, I put it in a blender, blend everything together. Uh, I put it in the instant pot, the electric pressure cooker. And uh, it's done in 10 minutes, you know, it, and it's, it's super healthy, but it also tastes fantastic. So, um, you know, that's something that uh, also from a convenience standpoint, um, you can put them in the freezer and just have them have those soups on hand for, you know, whenever you want to have them, you can, you know, make a double, double batch recipe. And, you know, so it makes the healthy eating, you know, very convenient that way. Uh, so that's the healthy uh, soups class. And then also there's the smoothies that taste like Girl Scout cookies. So we're going to do three different recipes from the new cookbook, uh, three out of the 10 different Girl Scout cookie flavors. And basically the, just quickly, the idea with that is, you know, I'm trying to use different fruits and vegetables like, uh, you know, banana and mango and sweet potato. And, um, you know, I have some zucchini and uh, yellow squash. You know, those are all things that if they're frozen and they're cooked, uh, they all kind of sit in the background, uh, but you know they give you all that nutrition and you know that. Um, uh, but they, you know, as far as flavor, they kind of sit in the background, and then I use different extracts and uh, flavorings to you know be able to turn transform that into something that tastes like you know thin mint or uh, or um, you know the do si do the peanut butter cookie smoothie you know love love all those flavors but you know trying to recreate those using ho healthy whole food ingredients uh, that's just going to make it healthier the more you drink it right. sounds great looking forward to that okay um well thank you everybody and um we will hopefully see you for the next class thank you Absolutely. colin yeah thank you thanks so much for having thank me you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Oops. Yes, stop recording.